Today, we're going to try one of the most basic forms of pottery and sculpture, the pinch pot. The pinch pot was actually first introduced around the Paleolithic era, which if you can believe is actually one of the first forms of human art. Um, it's really cool because the pinch pot can be made into all sorts of more complex forms. Um, if you, for instance, put two pinch pots together, boop, boop, and then put a hollow tube, you can create a whistle that actually makes sound. And I'll show you that, I think, in another lesson. So today, let's talk about a simple pinch pot. This is actually one big, large, wide pinch pot with a tripod foot, and I've added another pinch pot to the side. I cut out a little notch, and I put another pinch pot inside. So you can create some pretty cool forms just with this simple technique, and I'm gonna show you that today. All you need is a little bit of water, a comb or a fork or something that you can scratch with, and um, any tools that you like for texture. You could use rope, buttons, uh, seashells, even your sneaker bottom, anything that really presses in a cool texture that you like, and some clay. I'm using a air dry terracotta clay, and this clay is nice and soft, and it is pretty inexpensive. You can get it at most art supply stores, and it is quick to dry, not very permanent though. Um, this piece that I showed you here was a ceramic piece that was fired in a kiln. Um, if you make something with air dry clay, you can certainly use it, but it's not food safe. So first step in making a pinch pot is you need to make it into a ball. I like to cut my hand and pat and rotate until all the big lumps are out, and then you can take your finger and gently cover any little wrinkles in the clay that you see. The next step is to hold the ball in your hand. You don't want to leave it on the surface because it'll start to flatten out. You don't want that yet. You're going to take your thumb and you're going to push it in about two-thirds of the way through. It'll start to become thinner in the walls very soon. And you really want to try to aim for the very center of the ball. So I'm going to press down, 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 down. And you'll get a feel for this as you practice. And now my thumb looks a little like a mushroom. Um, the next step is you create kind of a sock puppet form with your hand. And you're going to put your thumb back in the hole and then cradle the side and put even pressure from your thumb and the rest of your fingers at the same time. So you're going to gently press and then turn. This is a slower is better kind of process. The more gradual you do this, the more even your pinch pot will become. I'm trying to focus my pressure evenly throughout, but avoid pinching the lip of the pot. The lip is the edge of the opening, because if that gets too thin too soon, it will be very hard to fix. And now it's wide enough that I can do this with two hands, and I can start to widen my pinch pot ever so gradually. When I start to feel that maybe it's getting about this thin um, all around, I might stop. I don't want it to become floppy and then you'll feel how it feels to you. If you like a nice thick and sturdy pinch pot, go for it. If you want something a little more delicate, you might have to be a bit more careful and stop a couple times. Next, what I like to do is I like to actually tap the lip. Right now you can see it's a little uneven. I might tap it a few times to even out the edge, but all in all, a pinch pot is a very rustic form. It may not be perfect exactly, but you can get it as good as you can. Now, to elevate my pinch pot a little bit, I want to put a foot on it. There's a couple feet that you could put on pinch pots. Um, you could do a simple ring foot, so I can take some more clay and create a little snake of clay and then take this snake and form a small ring. And then that can sit right on top. When you connect two pieces of clay together, you need to do something called score and slip. I don't have slip here because this is air dry clay, but slip is a combination of the clay and water slurry together, which helps it bond. What you do when you score and slip is you rough up both of your pieces. It should look a little bit like Velcro on both sides, really rough on both sides. You can always smooth out later. It's best to get it rougher. 
It may not look very pretty right now, but it's going to look a little more sturdy because of this. And next, what you do is you press to create a bond between these two pieces. And you'll see that's also starting to smooth out what I have. And you can do the same for the center. This clay is so nice and soft, it's very easy to work with. There you go. So that's a simple ring base, and you may want to tap it gently to make sure that when it dries, it doesn't wobble. And you can gently take your finger with a tiny bit of water or slip to smooth the surface out, really burnishing it with the edge of your finger. You could use a spoon with a really smooth edge to make your surface very, very even. Another thing that you could also do, I'm gonna take this off, is make a tripod base. A tripod is one of the most stable ways to create a base, and it was also used around the Paleolithic and Neolithic era. You can see them in a lot of Chinese pots. Um, and what you'd simply do is take two balls of clay, and now we're gonna add a third, equal size balls of clay, hopefully. And we're going to roll them into some smoother forms, and then score and slip again. But now I'm going to score three spots that are evenly spaced on the base of my pot. And put a little bit of water or slip in each. And if I simply let these stay, it would have the fine look to it, but I like to actually really make it look like it's part of the form. And so by pressing in, I can fully connect each of these feet to the pinch pot. And whoop, it's very slippery. Uh, and create a more sophisticated look to my piece. Uh, this will not fall off. Look how well it's connected. It looks like it's one piece instead of a couple pieces smashed together. That's really what you're looking for, this seamless effect. But of course, everybody has their own look that they're going for, so got to follow your heart. This looks quite rough, so feel free to smooth it out. And once you have a smooth surface to work with, you could go and apply any texture tools to the piece. Perhaps you would like to stamp some designs around. If you do, make sure to support the inside as you go. Do this really cool Greek key pattern all around. Be careful because this could make your walls much thinner too if you're very rough with it. So here you have a very simple pinch pot that you could then paint with acrylics. You could glaze if it's in ceramic clay. I hope you try it and have a great time using clay. Bye.